This is Brook Beach on the Isle of Wight. I've checked the tide tables and the tide is going out. I wonder what's been left behind by the tide along the strand line. The strand line is where the tide has reached its highest point. Along the strand line, there are usually lots of interesting things called flotsam. The first thing I came across was a crab's claw. I wonder what else I can find. What a lovely day to spend on this seashore. <laughs> friends from Nine Acres County Primary School had been planning lots of things to investigate when we got to the beach. Where's Jenny? Hello. Hello. Ah, there she is. What have you been up to? I nearly started without you. Well, we've been working out a special code to help keep ourselves safe and help the other creatures that live on the beach. And this is what we came up with. Find out about tides. I've done that, it's quite safe. Wear rubber gloves, keep safe. That's right, because there may be dangerous things on the beach, like chemicals. Stay with your group. Leave living creatures in their habitat. The beach was so large, we decided to divide it up into small circles and only look at what was within those areas. Okay. That's it. Go down, Rebecca. Yeah, that's it. Keep going down. Not all the things we expected to find would be safe. What about this oil? And in parts of the island, there are warning signs to tell you what to do if you do find something dangerous. So we put our gloves on. My gloves on as well. And we can all start looking for different things. What can we take from here? Then we can take My group classroom. started looking for things to take back and study in the classroom. Take shells. What's that next to you, Melissa? There. A crab. Is it a whole crab? A crab's leg. So can we take that home? Or to school? School. Yeah. Now, if it was a living crab, would you take it to school? Yeah. What would happen to them if you took them to the classroom through a line? They die. They, die. they would. And that wouldn't be very fair, would it? It's important, isn't it, to keep living things in their own habitat. What's Rebecca got there? Oh, that's nice claw. We asked ourselves, does it matter if some things stay on the beach? That's not like to hurt anyone, is it? No. What about that drinks can there, then? Where do you think that's come from? A picnic. Yeah. Someone came down here for the sandwiches, went to drink, and they just left it. What do you think about that? I think it's bad. It is, isn't it, really? It's a fishing line. Now, does this matter if this stays on the beach? Yes, because um, a bird might come along and trap its beak inside it yes. and pull it off, or its claw might get stuck in it. That'd be awful. So what do you think we should do with this? Put it in the bucket. Take it away and throw it away, yes? Mm. All right. That's oh, my good. goodness, there's so much rubbish and glass. This is terrible. And that's a bottle down there, you see. Yeah, where did that come from? A picnic. A picnic? Might have been thrown off a ship. Thrown off a ship, you think? Yeah. Oh, that looks very dangerous. What's that? Piece of metal. Piece of metal. Now, do you think that matters if it stays on the no. beach? It will hurt someone. It will hurt someone. I agree with you there. So, what do you think we should do with it? Put it in the bucket and take it to the school and put it in the bin. Throw it away. Good idea. Okay. There's lots of claws and nothing. We sorted there. everything we found into groups. Natural things that would rot away eventually, like shells, crab's legs, feathers, and wood. And unnatural things that could be dangerous and might not rot away. Drinks cans, a fishing line, torn fishing nets, many types of plastic bottles, and even pieces of rusty metal. It's amazing what you can find on a beach. 
we continued our investigations in the classroom. I was sorting out the things that shouldn't be at the beach to the things that should be at the beach. Do you know what it is? Looks like a dried tomato to me. Piece of plastic. Funny steak. They'd brought back some seaweed that had been washed up on the strand line. They wondered if it would make an interesting picture. We were pressing seaweed. And here are some of their pressed seaweed pictures. Seaweed doesn't just make pretty pictures. Some special types of seaweed from certain beaches can even be cooked. We were making lava bread with seaweed and oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Make it round. The seaweed is so sticky it has to be mixed with oatmeal before it can be shaped. The lava bread is fried in hot oil. Until it's crispy brown on both sides. Really nice put the splatter guard back on again, then it spits. Let the other side cook. Can you believe these are made of seaweed? In some places, this is a favourite tea time treat. Now, what's happening here? Painting on pebbles. What do you think they're painting? A sea anemone? Here's a seagull. and a crab. And here are some of the finished pebbles. The seashore is full of surprises, as I found out when I went to collect more pebbles from a different beach. Let's see what I can collect here. Well, there's some small pebbles and some large pebbles. But there's something very unusual here. This is Allen Bay, and it's world famous for its sands of many colours. There are more than 20 different shades of sands in the cliffs. But it's a bit too dangerous to scrape off the sands ourselves if you want to take something home to remind us of our holiday. So I can understand why we can't touch the sands on the cliffs. But here is a place where you can touch the sands and you can actually make your own souvenirs to take home. And these coloured sands have been specially collected from the cliffs at Allen Bay. Mustard. I wonder how many different colours I can put in my fish. A 
I'd never done it before, so it took me quite a while. Finished. Now I'll get it corked. Catherine is packing the sand in really tight. The water is used to force out any air between the grains of sand so they won't shake about and make the fish lose its stripes. And now for a plug to seal the hole. Showing off a collection of sand from Allen Bay's one thing, but a long time ago, a gentleman called Mr. Attrell had an even more unusual way of showing off his collection. Mr. Attrell lived in Myrtle Cottage and regularly went to the beach to collect shells. He really loves shells. Round ones, long ones, white ones, blue ones. He had so many shells that they filled up a large bucket. Then they filled up a large wheelbarrow. And then they filled up his garden shed. What a waste of time, said his neighbours, collecting something that has no use. But Mr. Attrell had a plan. He started to decorate a small wall on his house. Then he decorated a larger wall. Then he decorated as much of his house as he could possibly reach. Until one day, the neighbours looked out and Myrtle Cottage had turned into the Shell House. And here it is today. Goodbye.